Herzlich willkommen zum DocFest München. Mein Name ist Eva Baurittl und ich freue mich sehr, Ihnen dieses Jahr die erste duale Festival-Edition präsentieren zu dürfen. Das heißt, alle Filme, die Sie auf dem DocFest live sehen können, können Sie auch zu Hause anschauen. Und ich freue mich sehr, Ihnen jetzt den Filmgast vorstellen zu dürfen und mit ihm ein, eine kleine Gesprächsrunde äh, haben zu dürfen. Rune denstad lalo der Regisseur von Norwegian Headache. Hello, Rune. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. Hi. So, uh, my first question for for uh, uh, for the movie is: um, How comes the idea to to do a documentation about the resolution? I have uh, last 15 years had a climate anxiety, or I've been really depressed about the the climate change, and um, then I got a son six years ago mm -hmm. and I felt uh, even more desperate mm -hmm. uh, so that was uh, kind of my personal um, motivation mm -hmm. to try to find out how uh, we can save the planet so my son can be have a future mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then my producer Sigve Andresen approached me uh, with an idea of making uh, uh, a movie about uh, this Norwegian lawsuit. Uh, we have this article in our constitution, mm -hmm. Article 112, who gives us the right to a clean environment. And there was a group of uh, organizations that were going to sue the Norwegian government. Uh, and we started filming, uh, I think, two, two, three years ago, mm -hmm. uh, when it was in the um, court of appeal because they lost in the, the, the first uh, court and then they so we started filming so that was the kind of uh, first mm -hmm. uh, yeah. so so it's personal it's a personal reason yeah yeah it's yeah. Ah, yeah okay yeah because uh, we, we see a, lo a lot of um uh, in, in in the movie a, a lot of that that you c compared always the the, the future uh, within uh, within uh, and also the Fridays for Futures, they are also c kind of showing what um, yeah. So I I can feel it that you you have this always in mind your your kids or the the future generation um, while while uh, while I was watching watching it. How um, how did you find the protagonist for your for your film? It was a really hard movie to make <laughs> because it's uh, really uh, it's complicated. Uh, it's a lawsuit, but but it's it's kind of a civil lawsuit. It's not like a crime. It's not like a uh, you don't have like this murderer or uh, mm -hmm. uh, a victim. No, nobody's dead. Mm -hmm. It's about it's a case about people who are not born yet mm -hmm. uh, and oil that is not found. So it's a really abstract. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, court case. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and there's a lot of organizations, uh, but I think the primary, uh, the uh, uh, protagonist is, is the lawyer of, uh, of these organizations, Katrina, who, who drives the case through all these uh, uh, steps. So I think uh, we ended up with, the, with her as the main protagonist, but uh, then you have also a lot of other protagonists, uh, the, the the children and, and mm. the grand the grandparents, and so so for me it was really a difficult film to make. I, I usually make uh, fiction. Uh, uh, there's ten years since I made a documentary, so going into this uh, complex uh, case was really difficult. Uh, mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. To, to make it a film because there are so many and I, I'm not, uh, the movie will also take place in the nature, we, we're talking with researchers mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, was it easy to also film into the, the uh, in, in the court? Was was it allowed because where there was this uh, many scenes when, when you were filming in the court or? Was it okay because you had also the connection to the lawyer and? Yeah, we had to apply, but but it's really it's uh, it was uh, there was a a kind of a process to to 
to be allowed to film in the courtroom, but but when we had the um, uh, in in the court of appeal, it was really we we had li some limitations, but it was really easy for us. But then the, the uh, pandemic showed up and and it ruined our uh, our shooting in the um, in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Supreme Court in Norway is really beautiful. It's like, uh, mm. so I was really excited to go in there to shoot in this big hall with, with 19 judges or uh, 15 judges. Wow. This, uh, and then the Corona came. So so it was like a Zoom meeting, the whole. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so it, was, it was really depressing, but we, we, were, we managed to, 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 to do it in a way. But, but yeah. for me, it was like, uh, oh, <laughs> uh, but, but that's documentary uh, we had all we were shooting a lot of these scenes during the pandemic and we were traveling around Norway we were in, in, in Spitsbergen in in uh, in the Arctic and, and we were traveling and it was really in addition to the complex uh, it was a complex uh, movie to edit it was a complex movie to shoot because of the pandemic yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and all these characters and and uh, a lot of the characters uh, disappeared because they were uh, were changing the leadership in this organization so we had to switch with so it was really yeah oh okay so you have yeah. had you you had some difficulties uh, many difficulties as, as yeah. I heard for, for and it's yeah. changed a lot uh, of course because of the pandemic and uh, everything else but wow yeah so uh, Usually you start with one character, but we mm -hmm. had like 12 and then they were mm -hmm. changing and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the pandemic. So, but, uh, wow. but you made it. <laughs> made it. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. And, and um, uh, what I found really nice is that, y that you also um, shot the um, um, decide who's against, or not really against, but who's kind of a very um, cr critis uh, critics uh, of, of the whole thing. So um, um, how how did you um, how did you d decide or why did you decide to to do also the critical way to film also the critical way and put this into your film? Uh, you're talking about the antagonist, uh, probably uh, the yes, yeah. government and this small city. Mm -hmm. Now um, uh, the whole situa situation in Norway is really complex because we are one of uh, one of the largest oil and gas producers in the world, uh, and our prosperity is based on 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 this uh, industry. Uh, so we are a part. Uh, we are a big part of the problem. But we, uh, it's easy. I think it's easy to be an activist to just uh, say it's wrong. Uh, but it's it's much more complex than to. We can't just switch off the gas. There is a lot of communities, uh, mm -hmm. and we have one community in in the Arctic, Hammerfest, mm -hmm. who is totally dependent on this to build uh, schools and, and take care of the elders. And so it's a really complex problem. Uh, that, that's why the title is, is Norwegian Headache. Uh, mm. because, ah, yeah, uh, yeah. How, how should we do it? How should we... Uh, uh, and and uh, now with the war in Ukraine and the, uh, uh, Germany cutting off the oil from Russia, they, yeah. the, <laughs> the, the thing will happen in Norway is that we're going to produce more oil and gas to, to provide for, for yeah. the European market. So. Yeah. Uh, in Hammerfest now, where we were shooting, uh, they have uh, I, I think they have a lot of new contracts with uh, with uh, Germany, yeah. for instance. Yeah, of to, course. Yeah. To get this liquefied uh, natural gas mm -hmm. with ships instead of, of mm. pipelines. Yeah. So, I think so. so the problem is maybe even bigger now uh, <laughs> because we are raising our oil production. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, so even if the, yeah. Wow. Was that the answer to the question? Or, uh, so, so I, wanted, I, I wanted to meet the people who are dependent on the oil and, and are mm -hmm. working with this complex, the, 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 the Minister of Oil. Mm -hmm. I think there were three Minister of oils, Oil when we were shooting. They are also uh, changing or uh, there was um, 
And uh, the last one with Shuchi actually also have climate anxiety. So uh, yeah. I think we are all in the same uh, boat. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think the activists often tend to be thinking that it's really just easy to switch off the gas and put up a windmill, but, mm -hmm. but it's more complex. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and what was the the aim of the of the documentation? So, w what would would be your wish that the audience would uh, would do after they saw the the movie? I think the most important thing that I realized with this movie, and and that gives me hope, it's mm. that the law can change society. I think the law was part of changing the or stopping the slave trade back in the uh, 19th century. It was stopping the, the tobacco uh, industry. It was also a part of the civil rights movement in, in the United States in, in, in the 60s. So the law is, I think the law is the thing that is going to change uh, the climate uh, mm. uh, issue. Because uh, when we have this, article in our constitution, uh, we can uh, use it to protect, uh, not, uh, we can protect rivers, we can protect uh, lakes or, or, so, so I think it's going to, it's a paradigm shift. I think uh, the, the, the nature is going to get rights, the yeah. nature and animals like we, yeah. Uh, so I think it's a, a big progress and I think it will uh, be the most effective weapon against climate change now. I think mo many of the, uh, of the young activists who were part of this case, they went into law uh, school because they saw it was uh, a much better way to change the world than yeah. just walking around in the streets with... Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think that's that's my uh, hope for uh, for the future. The law oh. can change, uh, oh. uh, even if they lost in in this movie. That's a spoiler, of course. Mm. But uh, even if they lost, it's um, mm. uh, it, it was the first mm -hmm. case mm -hmm. about climate, and I think the, the it was a big mistake too. Mm. Yeah. Nice. And yeah. the, the, and the protagonist for uh, for example the Fridays for Futures uh, did they saw the movie and how did they react when when they saw the protagonist when they saw themselves in the in the big screen screen? <laughs> uh, I think the main protagonist Katrina was this lawyer. Yeah. And the main antagonist, the the government, uh, what you public pros prosecutor. Those are the two main characters. I think uh, uh, maybe the activists and and um, and their lawyer maybe realized that they maybe were too symbolic in their approach, or uh, I don't know, uh, because the, the public prosecutor also have some good points uh, in in the case. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think uh, most of them were, were actually a little bit, they didn't know that there were so many changes happening in Norway. Uh, when you see all these researchers, we have a German researcher as well, Sebastian, I think he's from Munich actually. Oh, okay. Right. So he's up in the Arctic uh -huh. uh, measuring permafrost mm -hmm. so for all the involved in the in the movie i think uh, they didn't know it went that fast mm. the climate change in norway mm -hmm. you always think about uh, the ice of course yeah but that is happening uh, also in oslo in in, in the okay. coast the, the fish are disappearing in in okay. the Oslo Fjord, uh, there is a dry season in the west of Norway that never existed. Uh, mm -hmm. The permafrost is melting, mm -hmm. so it's uh, a lot of things happening 
that people don't know about okay. and i think that's also was a, a shock for for the activists okay it's also getting warmer in oslo than the years before uh, like yeah i think yeah. since my my since i was born uh -huh. i i like skiing and i like to ski with my son mm -hmm. uh, we we have this uh, alpine uh, uh, ski uh, resort right up uh, uh -huh. i think 10, 10 minutes outside oslo and there's a lot of possibilities to ski but since i was born till my son was born we lose we lost 25 winter days in oslo wow. 25 so wow. <laughs> that's a lot wow and, and when i when i'm skiing with my uh, with my son i think like when he's the same age as me it's it's not going to be winter in yeah. oslo maybe he, he can't ski anymore huh? oh no not no. not not in nearby but he can go to the mountains maybe uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, we probably have the same in in uh, in the alps uh, yeah. yeah yeah it's the same here yeah the alps yeah. kind of it's too warm for the alps and uh, it's uh, it's also bad for the for the winter time as well especially where i come from i come from the alps so it's it was uh, too warm in in the winter and we yeah we did we not have we didn't have so much snow so f and when we had snow it was gone after three days we had so yeah. much but then it was gone so so quickly too quickly yeah yeah and also the the, the weather is changing yeah so much so um uh, i think it's uh, really sad because uh, it was a, it is a big part of my life and my identity mm -hmm. uh, I, I really enjoy the winter i like winter more than the summer oh. this <laughs> cold feeling uh -huh. in the winter day with skiing uh, with my son <laughs> i think it's uh, it's it's not like uh, the end of the world if norwegian can ski mm -hmm. <laughs> but it it's going to change the uh, uh, differences we have uh, mm -hmm. in the planet. It, the, beautif uh, yeah. the beautiful thing about the Earth is that there are different. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so I think it's really sad and uh, it makes me really depressed. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> me too. So, um, yeah, thanks for the talk. If you want to add something um, more or to, to say something more you you can do it but uh i'm finished with my questions no i have no? nothing to add okay. Uh, okay go go fight like the politicians and don't buy norwegian gas <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, so, but thank you case. for inviting me mm. nice to yeah, be a part thank of you, you. Uh, thank you thank you that that you join us and uh, I want to add also that Norwegian Headache is nominated uh, for the Audience Award, uh, which is sponsored by BR and for, uh, by uh, Dreisat. So um, the audience, you can vote uh, online for the movie and maybe it will be the winner for the Audience Award. So thanks for the talk and have a beautiful day and thanks for, for bringing us this beautiful film.